ban more XP laners, limit more of your heroes, because if all else fails, if you do ban all the XP laners, the Arlet's still available for boots. Nothing much for Aura here, so they have to be very, very uh, concerned, or they have to be very careful with what they ban in the XP. Well, the fact that they have a great roamer, roaming player in Onyx as well, with a wide hero pool, that's what makes it so difficult for Coach St. DeLucas to try and crack, right? The code of Onyx that's so multifaceted here. We'll have to see though. Are they going to ban an EXP in again? Or are they going to actually limit the mid laners? Because Delia? those mages, like I was about to say, they don't really stand out like as a solo big main carry, but they make moments happen. So it seems like Aura are going for big ultimates here, so they want to make sure that Onyx doesn't get their hands on any of that, especially Sans. What's left on the table? What's like the biggest ultimate you can think of out of mid lane and EXP lane position? Saritza? What else is there? Why do they ban Valentina? They're setting up for even bigger ultimates. My guess is maybe they want a Novaria pick. Yes. So Novaria and the Wild Charge, those are already two big ultimates. And XP, this is the, the question now. With if they don't pick X Borg last game, they have to pick X Borg now, right? It's an Akai and an Arlet. If they go for even more tanky mem, hey, don't do that, Kyrie. Don't give me hope of a Yi Sun Shin in no the jungle. Way. Don't give me hope. No what? way. So like Akai Rome. Don't give me hope, man. Just don't. Don't, we don't give me hope. Haven't seen that in ages. There's no way. Don't give me hope. It can't be. Surely. Are we gonna see Yi Sun Shin? <laughs> oh, the swap. The throwback to season eight. <laughs> Kyrie will play mid. Now look at this guy, man! Ah, See, it gave I mean, me hope! It is a surprise. Oh, come and on, then they pick go. away the X-Borg. Ah, oh, just... Aura. What do they go for now? And even the Lunox here for Sans. Wow. That's... Now that's a bit concerning, because Novaria, you can clear and you're supposed to avoid leaning altogether. Lunox is almost the opposite. You can do a lot of damage right there. And knowing that the main front line for Aura is most likely going to be the Grok or the Fredrin, Hey, if you can't crowd control them, take them out. That is the best crowd control, and Lunox can provide that for a tank. So, Ruby. I think so, yeah. I mean, the only uh, the one that makes sense, I guess. Like, you can punish the Arlet going in. Also, Lunox. A bit more close range uh, compared to the other mid laner out there. So, a bit more prone to get picked off by that I'm offended. Well, it's almost like a full dive kind of angle here for Onik. They have a Bruno though, so you have to wonder right here if Aura, in the back of a aggressive G-Rock in the hands of Yaoi, can they turn this around by just targeting the Marksman? Because later in the late game, of course the Lunox can supplement some DPS with the Chaos Order, but, you know, they're still gonna require this Bruno to really output some damage. I think the job for Boots right now is going to, like, his man marking uh, Kabuki in the first game, but later in the game he's gonna man mark this G Rock. He's gonna get him away from the Lord Pit, but we're going to see if that's gonna happen. Yahweh a chance for redemption against Keyboy. So far 3 0 3 1 for both of these guys. Game number two of Onyx versus Aura is on the way in the line of dawn. A freeze at the start trying to delay the minion waves from crashing in to give them a bit Welcome of prior. But we'll see in this matchup, they have so much shred, man. Boots on the x -Borg and Sans on the Lunox. Yeah, I feel like Guggen's going to be having a very tough time here. He's going to be the main guy in the front, and he's also going to be taking all this chip and shred damage from the side of Onik. I feel like, you know, we'll see if I'm correct, but I feel like in that mid game, he's going to be having a terrible, terrible time. For sure, but he can play through the uh, CCs, though. But Kyrie, speaking of CC though, this guy is. We've seen a lot of miracles plays by this guy on any hero, and Akai is one of them. Four man pin in the bottom lane. Yeah. Still remember? Yeah. Akairi. Yep. The signature Akairi. Retreat battle there, and Kyrie actually oh. wins it out over Gogon on that Fredrin. An early lead for the Akai. Also, items, Arashi. Arlet with the. Oh, the Keyboy with the signature. No boots, no roam boots early. Yeah, he wants... I don't think he's trying to outmaneuver anyone. He wants to rely on his strong suit right here. The fact that he can just sit there and wow. just take some damage, regen it, and hold his ground. 
Looking at the emblems though, in the later stage of the game, Kabuki will be doing a lot of damage, but so will Albert, man. With the Fatal, oh man, and the Weapon Mastery, because Bruno definitely has huge, huge snowball potential. Rashi, if we finally see something different from Gugun right now, he's actually taking Inspire instead of Thrill on a Fredrin. Why do you think that is? I feel like he doesn't really feel like he can really match the clear potential, because for Fredrin, you clear fast, but your power comes from your multitude of, you know, your flexibility. You have crowd control, you have some damage as well. With the Inspire, he can have a lot more tools to both engage by dashing forward, you know, with a knockup, or to get out of a sticky situation. And against Onik, like I said, he's gonna be having a tough time, he's gonna need it. People already poking Yaoi down there. So well charged into the back, trying to force out a heavy spin, even I'm a Fennec connected over from Iran. They're trying to bait it out. If Kyrie still no gets way. it, it's not gonna be oh. worth it, and they do because of the last insanity play. And in the back, it's oh. gonna keep it jumps in even forward. Gogun, an amazing appraiser's wrath to catch oh, them. This no. might be the triple for the rookie of the week of week one and two. Gogun. A Fredrin triple kill Rashi and they're trying to steal the blue buff as well? What's happening? Onik, they had that in the back, but they had to throw it away. Kyrie! Kyrie. He yeah, has skill going in, headbutt in! Oh, oh, it's a bait, but Gugun, an unofficial maniac, as that's Boots, who jumps in with last insanity, gets the shot, now goes on to Yehezku, burns him down, and gets the double kill back! Now it's Yaoi, who's gonna be caught, the final slash, dodged away, or tanked, soaked in by Yaoi with that power of nature. Man, everyone is overextending all over the place. <laughs> Pure chaos there, Onik just forgetting that the lower the Fredrin is, the more you need to be careful. A Boink. low Fredrin is nothing to nothing to ignore Again? at all. Four and one Gugun right now. He has a chance to be a lot more aggressive, go for all these ganks, and start turning the pressure onto Kyrie instead. It's an opportunity they have with a great wave clear that the Heskill can provide with the Novaria, but we'll see if they can do it fast enough before Oni can respawn. Already eight kills in four minutes. This is what I expected in game number one, but they played it so safely, so methodically. This was, this one is like the true Onik versus Aura, the bloodbath that we, were, that we were waiting for. All right, we'll see who has the tempo in the next fight. In the 30 seconds, I feel like Aura will still want to try and do their thing, get full control over the objective. But now in the side lane right here, Aran against a two kill Exborg, the lane was brutal enough without that. It's gonna be even more because Boots has been very, very aggressive. So if he can get a lead, push Aran away from the uh, get him low and get him to recall, then maybe Onik can get the prio towards the turtle instead. Put on the astral echo, mid control, heavy prio for Onik in the mid lane. Gugun though. Comes forward, trying to go for a bit of damage, Kabuki in the bottom lane. Sans, Ooh. Chaos Assault into the back, trying to deal more damage to Kabuki, but he's able to actually get out. Wow, Sans gets Chung Yaoi, Whoa. one HP. Early gets out, he has the wild charge, he wants to go for Run. initiation. Before he dies, perhaps, around in the back, Flickers out of the last insanity, Boots. Right there, oh, in the bottom lane, Albert finds a kill. Yaoi and Gugun, very low. Aran as well. They need to find some compensation here with a 4v3. It's still Onik who are winning this team fight. Yaoi with wild charge, connecting on the two members. Gugun, now pinned down, but still is able to secure the turtle. It's Aran in the back, going for the stun. Gugun over the taunt. Now Keyboy jumps to the vengeance, pulled back, but I'm offended. Of Aran, don't run Wolf King onto the back. Now it's going to be Keyboy who will be taken down Sons. by Aran. Sons has finally joined the team fight now with the last insanity and the chaos assault. It's also a turret down below going down. Aran against three. Natural Echo, Sans 1 HP, gets out with the brilliance. Yehezkiel, we're going to ask oh, the wall down to stop him from getting out, to deal more damage for Yehezkiel to execute him. Who won that trade? I don't know, but it is chaos indeed, Arashi. Like, what's happening right now? In the bottom lane, though, I think Aura was like, they, need the, they, they felt the urgency to get something, but that was... Like, who won that? <laughs> I feel like Onik, in a way, did win that. The fact that they did not get the turtle, but they got kind of trades all around with a really solid late game DPS source in the Lunox, and they got the turret, and the, they got the kill on Kabuki to put him further behind, and they got the turret as well, and all that gold in the pockets of Albert. We'll have to wait and see for the official gold charts, but I think Albert is starting to build up quite a lead, and Onik can really use that but this is definitely not the Onik that we're used to, man. They're just going for this full-on fist fight. We're used to see Onik dominating the game from the get-go, and right now they're down about 300. Not much of a lead though for Aura, but he's still leading it against the Invincibles in Onik. Oof, taking a look at the items for now. 
Walk and Crow for both junglers. Kairi is definitely up in the curve. And with Aura equalizing, the goal lane isn't that far apart, actually. Of course, Albert has the power spike in the Berserker's Fury, but now Kabuki has the Golden Staff, uh -oh. so a lot more passive procs. Can Guggen get a play, though? Guggen on to Sans. Albert gonna be the target for Aura. He flickers, I'm offended. Now Sans all on the back. Oh, it's a good shot up to the back right now, but Akairi is able to peel for his team. Oh. People with vengeance, and it's Yaoi who's pinned down against the enemy turret. Kabuki rotating over. Guggen looking for the taunt, not able to connect it. It's Sans traded in for Yaoi. A trade, more value for Aura. The Jukes though from Albert, he knew that the Wild Charge is coming and just evades it. Sidestep away, you know, one step away from Yaoi. And that way he didn't connect. He managed to escape, but Boots might be in trouble. He is, pops in the last insanity before the Faraga armor gets taken down. Gugun already a quarter of HP. Keyboy, final slash to the back, and Kabuki oh, is the one who gets it. Despite Gugun getting full CC'd, a taunt over. Gugun now with a knockup. Keyboy gets baited in by Gugun, and Yehezkiel picks up the kill. 1,000 goal lead now for Aura. Man, both teams just going at it, but Aura once again showing the neutral objective play. After the tempo play on the top side, he just rushed there and Onik. They're trying their best to really match the kind of speed, the rotations, but they're really trying to force a lot of these fights. It's almost they need to stabilize for a bit longer before they do anything, because this is not how they usually play. This is not how they want to be playing either. We've talked about the retro battle between Kugun and also Kairi, but so far the one who's taking it is none of them. Even in the first game, there has been some moments where Keyboy stole it. Yeah. <laughs> Keyboy and then now... Was it Kabuki? Yep, Kabuki. I mean, this is what happens. Movement. Too much CC, no retribution being executed. The one who gets the scraps is the victor. We have to keep in mind that Onik hasn't been, hasn't been dictating where and when these fights happen, though. They've been trying to scramble, and they've been sending two or three members to deal with the whole Aura squad to try and get that neutral objective. So oh, we haven't wow. really seen a full 5v5 yet. And we haven't really seen Lunox being picked up in MPL Indonesia Season 12. The last time it was picked is week one? If you told me that, I wouldn't believe that's that. Yeah, Lunox isn't really... Well, yeah, it but has it's been still, out of the meta for know, a while. Yeah. It's still conditional, I get it, but it's still... usable, I guess. For sure. I mean, against tanks in particular, against Aura, that's very frontline heavy. And we've seen earlier, the fact that they play so straightforward, front to backs or pickoffs only, the Lunox does have value, and there's a great outplay potential available for Sans. But right now, it's almost like they're just too preoccupied dealing with Yaoi, like we saw in the previous fight in the top lane, that they can't really get Sans and Albert to output their damage as efficiently as they would like. So, with, with more items, I feel like it's going to be quite different. But now, again, Aura pressuring for the Lord, the, the, Lord, the neutral objective, and Onik, they're going to end up scrambling here as well, because Keyboy is not there. Gonna bait out the heavy spin first for Kairi. All oh, Faraga armor already gonna be taken out here. Ooh. Wild charge not connecting. A good snipe down. Sounds slow. Oh, oh, no. Finds the killing spree through the minion waves. Now it's Kairi who's looking for the steal. Google. No Appraiser's rat retribution. Okay. Yaoi also in the front trying to zone them away. Aura now they have a big lead. 3,000. Gold lead. Finally, a safe space for Gugun to execute that retribution. Good job for Yaoi Yaskil. Even Aran just zoning on everyone, also dealing the damage. Ultimately getting a kill towards Sans, one of the most core members of Onik, and sitting at a four deaths, the most of the team. We're seeing Aura adopt the strategy of putting all the pressure they can onto Sans. Even in game number one, Sans was the main playmaker right there. And if you look at this game, oh. he's always pressured. A wild charge on a Keyboy by Yaoi. Picks him off now as that is a last insanity to the back. Finding Yaoi, taking him down. Keyboy for Yaoi, but Boots is caught. Shut down by Kabuki. A shot over to Sans oh. by Yehezkiel as they take control of the enemy jungle. Now the Lord's Lord. marching down yeah. right here. Oni trying to clear it, but they're going to be zoned away. It's going to be a base defense on this. Aran! But I'm offended. Oh no, Purify! Ooh. An interesting Purify to get out there with Kairi with a headbutt. Turret tier 2 down below, taken down. Looking for the mid lane now for Aura. Aran, did you see that with the item, Rashi? What Aran picked up? Malefic Roar <laughs> for Ruby. I told you, he's crazy. He's loco. <laughs> oh, he got the kill onto Sans earlier as well. And I was saying again and again, Sans 2, 4, and 4, despite having a bit of a lead in the early game, he's just not 
that flexible of a hero, no crowd control, no real playmaking tools. He's forced to wait for the right moment, and Aura keeps going and targeting him whenever they see him using the Astral Echo. But this is something that Onik can try and find a way around, because otherwise, just Albert, it's going to be so difficult for him to try and output all that damage, despite having all these items, unless he has some coverage. Yep, and Boots is supposed to be that one. But right now, like, when you're up against some full damage Ruby and also the the poke from uh, Kabuki and also the Espiel, it's hard to stay intact with that Viraga armor. So you have to play it a bit more carefully, just a bit more passively compared to the usual x Borg that we've Ooh. seen so far. But Sans, look at that, the Kumar Bosch. <laughs> yeah, he went up there avoiding pursuit. He gets out. Once again, it's a slow build-up, but in the late game, in a way, Aura will have more control, more poke as well. We've seen what no Novario can do in the late game, mainly I think from a boy, from Geek Fan. But for Onik, they have a Lunox, hey, hey. keep in mind. And now with, an, with no I'm Offended, can Onik go for a fight right here on their turn? Astral Echo, onto the back, revealing two members. Parry, ooh. I'm not going to red tree this one. Vukun wow. is actually the one who utilizes his red tree. Now two levels up on Kairi. Sans, is that a power spike that we need to note? The Holy Crystal, 12 minutes in. What a guy, what a rookie, what a player, Gugun. The first time he's played at MPL Indonesia season 13, the highest stage of Indonesia, and he stepped up, being already one of the better junglers in MPL ID. Look at the waves right here. This favor aura, so Onik are the ones that have to try and make something happen for now. Although with the waves milling up near Onyx base, it might really start pushing back, but Keyboy wants a play to happen. Pops in the conceal, Ooh. final slash, doesn't really reveal anyone even. And Aura have a slow push built up in both side lanes. Everything's going right for Aura, they have the zoning. Meanwhile, Zyaoi looking for something. Pops in the conceal, but Lord actually stops that play from happening. Keyboy! Karna, I'm offended, able to flicker out the safety. Meanwhile, Yaoi, three-man set with a wild charge, now flickers out the safety. Meanwhile, Gugun. 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 Appraiser's Brad now pinned down Sans, Chaos Assault. Kabuki's on the killing screen now, chasing down Albert. Gugun on the other side of the map right now, trying to survive with MP Rage. He gets oh, out of the dash, one hit away, and Aran's chasing him down as well. Gugun still 1 HP, oh, not just able oh, to oh, survive, oh, Gugun! My goodness! What a guy once again with the play, Gugun! Remember the name! Holy! Who is this man? <laughs> he comes in and just shows Onik who is boss. And now with the control, Kyrie trying to go for a steal, but it's too risky. Albus trying to life steal in the jungle, but might be too difficult with the Heskill having his eyes on the target. Google once again making oh the play no. happen. That's the pull down right now. Kyrie needs to use. The heavy spin, but he doesn't even have it on cooldown. Around in the back, now shut down. Ooh. Taken out. Gugun does the same thing to Kairi, though. Kabuki still has that ultimate. Did you commit more damage? Keyboy looking for the steal. I don't think he yeah. can go for this. He gets buried out, zoned away, and Aura. 4,000 gold lead with an enhanced lord in the 14th minute of the game. Just the ooze and the ass from the crowd when Gugun made those play, man. Once again, showing off against Kairi. AI prediction presented by the Samsung Galaxy series now showing that Aura, against everyone's expectations, has a close to 70% win victory rate against Onik. They have the Lord, they can try and make that work right now with Yeheska picking up the glowing one for more siege potential. But Onik do have damage, and if you look at the items, their carries in particular, Sans and Albert, are one item away from just equalizing it out. So Aura actually is still, in a way, fighting against the clock. A question before the uh, the Lord Arashi. Like, what what's happening with Onik? Like, what went wrong? Is it the draft? Is it just the execution? I feel like it's uh, a bit of execution, especially early on. And now, it becomes augmented by the draft. So with the game going longer and longer, I feel like there's a chance for Onik to turn this around, especially if Aura gets impatient. The charge from the Lord in the mid lane. Albert and oh, Sans. Wow. Amazing wave clear for the Lunox. Yep. They're able to deal with it very, very quick. Now onto the bottom lane, Albert goes. Yaoi, conceal. Power of nature, boots. Whoa. Last insanity to zone them away, but he will lose his Faraga armor. When he dives in, Gugun now with the immortality. Keyboy, final slash, not connecting. Once again, Albert already half HP. They're looking for a set. Aran has flicker. Gugun oh, has flicker, but Aran does not have an I'm offended. And Onik. It's so Onik. Very, very well. Very well is an underwhelming statement, Miracle. That defended like 
Fantastic. Like, yeah, couldn't go better, I guess. Like, this is perfect defense for Onik. Like, they're not giving up a single base turret, despite this is being leveled to Lord. I think Aura now will have to just wait out, wait it out. Maybe try and get Iheskio to do the damage, but this is what all they can do. They don't really have any chances to really brute force into the base due to the insane wave fear that Onik has. Uh -oh. Now, oh, Boots, and I'm offended this time with the Kyrie onto Boots as well. You can see on Keyboy, what oh. touch by Yaoi! Forcing a Purify, three man turn into the final slash. Ooh. Boots gonna be taken down as Yaoi dives deep with the brutality. Kyrie pinning down Iran. San, very low, taunted up, good, good. Stabs him and takes him out. It's a three for one in favor of the Dragons. Three for one for Aura there. Aran didn't get it shredded immediately, but he has done what needs to be done. With 20 seconds left on the clock right here, can Aura force Onik to re let go of their last remaining members? Keyboy and Albert, two against the world. Oh, they want to convert? Let's see, oh, the barrier. Almost took Albert to the wrong side of the wall. Keyboy flickering in front just to die with the immortality. He tries to zone the minions away. Now with the final stack, not connecting. Yeah, we find a wild charge. There's no purify, but there's a big bomb. And Kabuki goes for the base. One to one winning moment by Samsung Galaxy A555G. We have game three. The fire has been ignited by Aura. Especially Guga showing off.